Welcome to Trick Your CNC Out, where we talk about the various ways you can improve upon the stock configuration of your Winfinny Elite. Today, upgrade to an ATC. I'm not really sure what to show, but it's put away. Everything's transparent. Today, I'd like to share with you my experiences installing and beginning to operate the Pwn CNC ATC system on my Winfinny Elite Foreman. Overall, my experience has been very good. Uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with the system. If I could go back and do it again, I'd definitely buy it again. Uh, there are some things, though, that I ran into and some things you should know if you're thinking about want, buying one yourself. And if you do buy one, you can use the Ugly Dog coupon code to save yourself 5%. And if you do that, I very much appreciate it if you use the links within the description here so that I get a small commission on that sale as well. Um, well, I'll start with the, the installation process. The, the system arrived in great shape. Everything was color-coded. All the cables had Velcro ties on them of different colors. And there was a document that acted like a key that told you which cable was what. And that corresponded perfectly with the first installation video, which is referenced by a QR code on the document that, um, that, that Jeff did. And that was a great video, very, very easy to follow. He referenced the colors on the cable, so it was super easy to, to, to track what he was talking about. And if you just set everything on the table and, and plugged all the cables in, like he said, it would probably take you about 15 minutes to set everything up, if that. Um, the, the thing that takes the longest is running all the cables neatly through your table or whatever setup you have just to make sure that you want it, it, it it's going to be a permanent install so that's the part that takes the time and and it could take you an extra 30 minutes or an extra three hours depending on how complicated your setup is in my case i had uh i had this this custom built table and i had some holes drilled through for running cables and it took me a little bit of extra time to do that but very happy with what i ended up with so that first video covered not only the physical installation, but it covered also a little bit of the Maso setup. It covered essentially the parts you need to set up to enable the inputs and outputs to work with the tool changer. And uh, there was one issue, kind of an oversight in that video, and that was that the tool changer input one and tool changer input two need to be inverted for the tool changer to work properly. And that was not mentioned in the video. And if you look closely at the setup screen in, on Jeff's system, they weren't inverted there either. So um, I noticed that it wasn't working properly. And I went to the massive documentation to try to figure out what was wrong. And I looked at tool changer one and thought, I think this needs to be inverted. So I inverted it. And then I looked at the documentation for tool changer two, and I thought that needed to be inverted too. And I thought, this just can't be. I, I'm I don't want to break something, so I I reverted my first inversion on Tool Changer One, and I opened a case via email with Pwn CNC, and this is probably about 10:30 p.m. and I got a uh, I got a message back from them within probably 10 or 15 minutes, and I had the problem solved in you know in no time that evening. So that that was awesome support. You know there was an oversight in the video, but they, they really did well with the, uh, with the follow-up on the support piece. So with that, I was all set up, uh, good to go. Just need to set up my tools and the tool rack within the Masso. And that part was handled by a second video that Daniel did. And that was a very easy to follow video as well. The, you know, the, the most difficult thing there is just deciding exactly where you want to place your tools, how you want to place them, how tall you want your tool racks, that kind of thing. Now with system ships, by the way, with four of these flush mount tool racks, and um, and they recommend in a number of different Pwn CNC videos that you mount your spindle as far down as you can. I mean, so it such basically says that the spindle is touching the wasteboard in the spindle mount. Now, I think the reason why they're doing that is to get around the dust boot problem, which I'll, I'll touch on here in a second. Um, but it, you know. You, you end up with problems with that. I mean, one problem is the further down your spindle is in the spindle mount, the more deflection you're going to get with the, with, with, you know, pressure being put against the tip of the tool and that longer lever now since the spindle is pushed down further. The second and possibly bigger problem is that you're going to give up usable Z travel. The system only has 160, the, the elite systems with the Z20 slider 
only have 160 millimeters of travel in the first place. And if you place the bottom of the spindle all the way down on your waste board, if you look at a typical tool that's about a, an inch and a half long, to the to the point where it map or it mounts into the spindle, that's about three inches. I think I measured it earlier at 76 millimeters. You're going to give up 76 millimeters of your 160 millimeter travel below the waste board. That doesn't seem great to me. I want to be able to cut in this entire area from the surface of the waste board all the way up to where I hit the bottom of the, the slider. So I want to mount my tools much higher. Um, that's, that's a problem I knew I was going to have before I purchased the system. And it may be that not everyone is quite as, you know, I don't know, you know, um, trying to find a nice word to describe myself. Anal retentive is probably not the right one. But um, maybe everyone's not that way and going through the details before they purchase something, but I did. And I, so I knew I had this problem coming that I'd have to find a solution for. And um, I'll, I'll back up if you look real closely at the Plum CNC videos. They show a couple different versions of dust collection. One is with a fixed Z system. Uh, the videos I remember seeing are based on the V9. And the V9 is going to have um, a, you know, a fixed height as a fixed Z system. So in order to make that work, you've got to drop your tool racks way down so that the brush on normal stock is going to clear the tool racks or the tool holders when they're in the rack. So um, I'll just pull out the probe here. Actually, that's not going to fit through this, this one, but I can throw this one in. So if I mount that way down to where it's at the bottom of the table and I have, say, three-quarter inch stock and, a, and an inch and a half brush, It'll clear this, this tool holder when it goes to make a tool change, no problem. But in doing that, I have to increase my deflection and lose a bunch of usable Z travel, and I don't want to do that. So a fixed Z system is challenged for that reason with this particular ATC system on this particular machine. So um, the other option that I've seen in some of the Pony CNC videos is to use a variable Z spindle mount system, uh, to, to use a spindle mount dust boot. And in doing that, um, what you'll notice is the tool racks are spaced apart. And depending on whether they're front to back, left to right, or um, and what boot you have, you might see racks that are spaced apart by multiple inches. But you're definitely losing tool density when you have to do that. And that to me also wasn't a, a, a really good solution. So I'm spending all this money in this ATC system, and I, I don't want to have it just change a few tools. I want to be able to have it change all of my tools. I mean, I, I can't because I have more tools than will fit on an axis, but, um, but I want to have it change at least as many as will fit on a single axis. I don't want to have it restricted by anything other than that. So the good news is there's a solution for this, and I knew it, I knew it could be done before I purchased the system, so, um, so I tackled it. And that system, the, the solution is two-part. First, they maximize uh, tool racks, which I'll try to link the video here in the corner so you can click on that if you want to learn more. Those will allow you to mount your spindle up high enough to reduce the deflection and to retain all of your usable Z-travel. Second part of the solution is a retractable dust boot, such as the Sidekick, which is right now, as the time, at the time of this shooting, is in uh, pre-sale. I expect it to ship at the, you know, right around the beginning of, of uh, May. So not long before this thing's actually shipping. Um, that has to come up so that it can clear the tool holders in the racks because now they're raised way up. So we have to, we have to be able to clear those. And it's also designed such that it works with them very closely spaced together. So... You can have as many tool racks as you can fit in the space, and you won't have to worry about collisions. So while that was kind of a, you know, the potential for a magnitude 8 or 9 on a scale of 10 problem, to me now that is a, that's not a problem at all. It's solved. That is, a, that's a, that is completely solved, no issue whatsoever. So the first two issues I ran into, totally solved, completely happy with it. And, and, and uh, before I get into the third issue, there is one thing I also want to mention, kind of my favorite and my surprise favorite feature is this MTC. This thing is pretty cool. Um, I didn't expect I was going to use this, but 
I have found myself using it quite a bit. And it's just a button press to release the tool and then to, to uh, insert the tool back into the spindle. So I, I found myself using that when, let's say, I'm doing some work mounting the dust boot. And I don't want to risk cutting my hand underneath the tool. So I just remove it, remove it and you know, set it aside. Now I don't have to worry about cutting myself on that tool. Uh, and then I want to put it back. I just, you know, grab it, put it back. And I won't, I won't do it again because I might be swinging my hand under there again. But there's lots of cases where I found whether it's doing various types of installation or adjusting things or whatever, where I felt like that was a really handy feature to have. So that's a great addition. I'm a big fan of that feature, even though I didn't really think I'd have much use for it. The, the last thing that I want to talk about, and this one's really important, you should definitely know this. Uh, even if you're already a Pwn CNC ATC customer, this is something you should know. The way the system works, there's a little bit of a, an incompatibility between the Maso controller and the GPNE ATC spindle when it comes to detecting tool changes. Um, there is a, an input that goes high when the system uh, fails to pick up a tool. Okay, and that's supposed to tell the system, hey, stop, I failed to pick up the new tool, stop and fix it. So then the master will throw an alarm and you have the opportunity to fix whatever was whatever happened there. And now normally, under normal circumstances, you're going to pick up the tool and it's not going to be a problem, but there could be an issue. Uh, maybe the tool wasn't there in the rack. Maybe you had an air pressure problem that, that uh, caused you to fail to pick up the tool. Maybe there's something was out of adjustment and you failed to pick up the tool. Whatever the reason, that's an important capability to have. If you don't have it, as we don't right now, the way the system sits, and you pick up a tool, let's say that tool was destined for a roughing tool path where you're going to be cutting out a bunch of material that you'll later go back and finish with some, some other finishing bit or a smaller tool. And then in that same program, the next tool is going to go then and clean up those edges and it's maybe get tighter into the corners or, or whatever the case. And it's expecting, that G-code is expecting to have that area roughed out from that previous tool. Well, it's not. That tool failed to get picked up. So you're going to jam the bit right into the stock, probably break the bit, probably wreck your workpiece, and that's an issue. So how do we solve this? Fortunately, there is a solution. That solution is make sure you measure the tool on the tool setter after every tool change. Now, that's a little bit of a bummer because it does take some extra time that the perfectly working ATC system wouldn't make you take, but it's, a, it's, a, it's well worth that to reduce that risk. So that's my suggestion. Measure every tool, and if it fails to measure because it's not there, the massa will alarm and it'll stop, and you'll have the opportunity to fix the problem. Now, so why does this problem happen? Um, well, I, I mentioned there's an incompatibility. Essentially, uh, the GPNE spindle does turn that input on, or uh, yeah, it does turn that input on, but it doesn't turn it on long enough for the MASO to detect it. So the MASO shows it on the screen, go high for just a moment, and then continues on as if the tool was successfully changed. So, um, so what happens? What are, what are our next steps to try to get a real permanent solution as opposed to this workaround? Well. Uh, Pwn CNC has been in communication with Masso around trying to solve this problem. I personally have opened a case with them reporting the problem. I imagine that other people have done the same thing. I think if they hear enough feedback, they'll certainly want to fix it. Um, for them, it's probably it's got to be just a simple software change. I think it's, that's the easiest solution here is just a, a simple firmware change to change the way they detect whether or not that, that input goes high. And, uh, and that should be really a, a very simple and easy fix, I think, in the software. Not having a look at their, their code, maybe there's something I don't understand, but I think that'd be a very easy fix. And you know, I, I have a lot of confidence in Maso choosing to resolve this. I've opened a number of cases with them on things that I've reported as bugs, and they fixed them. So I don't know why this would be any different. I think they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna do the right thing and we'll be able to move on to a fully functional, perfectly working ATC, ATC system and, uh, and not have to have this one workaround, which I would classify right now as maybe like a magnitude 2 out of 10 sort of problem. 
So it's not enough to make me uh, not love the system. I really do. I really love it. I, I'm happy. It saves me a ton of time. Uh, it's very cool. That's a nice way to trick this, the CNC out. Um, I, I'd definitely go back and buy it again if I could.